it's me Diana at Dolly Scrub Hub still going and um, this time I'm going to be showing you how to make an isolation gown so first things first is what is an isolation gown it has um, two ties one at the top here and then one sort of around the waist and then it has a, um, a slit in the side seam of the sleeve here for where your thumb goes the equipment that you need ideally is an overlocker um, if you've got if you've been doing your tight zigzag like you have on the scrubs then that's also fine and there is an, a place two places where you can do a French seam um, well on the shoulder seams and possibly down the side seams so um, overlocker first um, or a very tight um, clean zigzag right on the edge so I'm just going to show you how to do that in one sec um, you've got notches down the edges of your seams as well and you don't want to lose them so when you do your, your zigzag don't forget to try and mark them with a pin or some chalk and also when you get your kit um, you'll just have one long piece of uh, tie and elastic so what you need is um, 20 centimeters for your cuffs and 35 centimeters for your ties so um, get those all cut up and ready what you'll get in your kit is your two sleeves the back is in two pieces because there's an opening right down the back i pre-pressed the um the hem where the casing is going to go so you've got one centimeter pressed under and then another centimeter and that will form the casing so get that pressed and ready okay i'm just going to show you how to do the zigzag you need to set your zigzag to about i would say two on your stitch length and then about a three or even a four for your zigzag so it's really wide and quite tight stitch right on the edge of your fabric as you can see here I've come to the place on the bottom of the sleeve where I've got some notches in the seam allowance these two first ones you come to uh, where you need to leave a gap for the thumb um, so when you come to it if you're zigzagging or overlocking you don't want to then fly across those and then lose them so I'm just going to pop a pin in there and there just to remind me where those are so I'm going to continue my zigzag right across those and this is where I pre-pressed pre Hem where the casing is going to go through, so I'm just going to zigzag across there. While I'm just stitching this, I'm just going to talk to you about the difference between open and closed seams. So, we are going to firstly stitch our zigzag stitch on all the side edges of your sleeves because this is going to be an open seam. And an open seam is where we um, press the seam allowances open um, so we can have this hole for the thumb. All the other seams on the garment are going to be closed seams. And what that means is where we actually stitch, the, we finish and zigzag or overlock the seam allowances together. If you've got, by the way, if you've got a four, four thread overlocker, you can do all of this. You don't need to do um, a straight stitch then a zigzag. You can do um, literally just sew it all up with your four thread overlocker. Um, lucky you. We're now going to stitch your shoulder seams. So match up your shoulder seams. Now this is where we're going to do a French seam. We're learning all about seams this time. It's brilliant. Now you've got a one centimetre seam allowance. So for a French seam, you put wrong sides together first, which is pretty uh, tricky to figure out on this fabric so choose a wrong side and you will need to stitch a straight stitch about four mil or the edge of your foot say um, to begin with and the idea is with the French seam is that you're encasing the seam allowance inside the seam so that's our first row of stitches we're going to turn right sides together what you want is for this seam to be really open and on the edge and wherever you stitch next needs to be just a little bit tiny bit more than what you did last time I've done this so many times where I've then opened it up 
<laughs> I might actually have done it this time and discovered I haven't quite caught it all in there but don't worry if that happens because um, you can just stitch it again further over so that's all the inside caught up inside there and this is what it should look like as a seam and then that will be pressed to one side preferably to the back finish the uh, neck edge here with a really tiny double fold hem so again you've got about a centimeter to play with and we're going to just fold just get it started it's not something you can really pin so I'm just going to fold about five and fi five mil and five mil get that under my sheen get the presser foot down on there needle down and then from there I can start to roll this over now because it's a curved edge you really want to keep the amount that you turn as little as you can so as I say five mil and another five mil and then these could you just stitch right on the very edge of that fold when you come to the shoulder seam it's a bit fiddly just allow yourself to stretch on the bias um, as you stitch this and plan for what's coming so the shoulder seam is going to take a bit more stretch as I say the more you try to turn in terms of quantity of fabric the more difficult this is going to be so as I say keep it keep it as narrow as you dare quite a lot of fabric here going where your French seam is and then this is coming around to the front now so again turning about five or less if you can just about pull that through if you've got um, a rolled hem foot which looks like this you could give that a go I just tried it and found it really tricky uh, when I got to the seams but if you're a bit more adept at that give it give it a whirl by all means I'm now going to stitch the sleeves onto the garment so I've pinned the sleeves to the gown and and matched all the notches we love you Kirsty there's two there and then there's one where the shoulder seam uh, meets the sleeve and then the front is there's there's one notch there which is the front of the gown right before you move on to anything else we're now just going to finish the edge of your sleeve seam with a zigzag remember our tight zigzag there right on the edge and this is a closed seam, so you're going to stitch both seams together. We're going to whiz up the side seam now. So we're starting here at the cuff. I've unfolded the bits that I've pressed because we're going to sew around those once we've sewn the sleeve up. So we'll just start here with your one centimetre seam allowance um, and follow the contour of the... Um, of the cut. Now when you get to your pin, remember the notch there, this is where we back stitch and stop and then start again here. So we leave that space for the thumb hole. Now I've just stow, sewn past the shoulder seam here and we've got a, our first notch that we come to on the side seam of the gown. Um, is where we want to insert the tape. So just push that inside, sandwich it inside the front and between the front and the back, and that's just going to get incorporated in that side seam, just like that. I'm going back to my zigzag, and I'm just going to just close the seam there, start start at the top of the sleeve, and then just carry on right down the side seam of the gown. Open this seam out so that the gap for the thumb um, is there 
open and make sure you did backstitch there. So we're going to open that and then you pre-press this so that should just fold over nicely. Backstitch. So when you're doing a double fold or a casing, make sure you stitch right on the edge so you're not taking up too much space and you're leaving as much as possible for the elastic. I've just put the elastic in so don't forget it's your 20 centimeters of the elastic and secured it and lost the disappeared the end inside of the casing so just a quick row of stitches there then I'm going to put it back over and just do another quick row of stitches here just to reinforce this opening back stitch get started and then almost straight away we're going to insert the top ribbon in it goes and just stitch right across that and then the next notch that you find and it, this will be the one that matches the ribbon that you stitched into the side seam on the other side it's all going to start making sense this is where i want to now put the second piece of second piece of tape I'm going to show you, I forgot to show you with the top one, but what you can do is, um, once you've stitched over it, because that's going to want to end up facing this way, so rather than go back to it, what you can do is just back stitch up, back stitch it so it's facing the other way. Also that makes it a bit more, reinforces it a little bit too. This is the final bit, so a reinforced rectangle fold over the end and I'm going to go for a slightly smaller stitch to do this. So um, you're going right around there. Sometimes I just go backwards so I don't have to turn the whole thing round. Make sure you have your needle down when you to turn those corners. So there you go, finished isolation gown. It's a really easy sew. Um, just tie up that last one. These isolation gowns are really critical. So um, let's go for it. You are brilliant. Well done.